Welcome to Bishop Auckland Methodist Church in this season of Easter and New Life. And our preacher this morning, as you listen on 105.9 Bishop FM or watching YouTube, our preacher this morning is Mr. Edwin Hurd. Over to you, Edwin. Good morning and welcome to worship. And a special welcome to all those joining us on, on the internet and on Zoom and on other electronic means. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A few words from Romans chapter 6. Just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Our first hymn is number 350. I cannot tell why he whom angels worshipped should set his love upon us now or then. Number 350. Yet the same Savior. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come together this morning to worship you, to, pr to praise you, to express our love for you, and to acknowledge your great love for us. We come to worship you with our hymns and our prayers and our readings of your holy word. We come to praise you because you are our wonderful God, far greater than us in knowledge and wisdom and power. And despite your greatness and our smallness, you see us and you know everything we do and say and think. And there are times, Father, when our thoughts, words and deeds fall short of what you might hope for us. But you alone are perfect. We are imperfect. And we know that you forgive all those who truly repent of their sins. So we bring our sins before you now and humbly ask for your merciful forgiveness. Father, we give you thanks for that forgiveness, which is far more than we deserve. And we give thanks for everything you have given for us, everything you have done for us. But above all, we give thanks for the gift of our Lord Jesus, who came to be one of us, to live an earthly life among us and to sacrifice that earthly life for our sins. And we give thanks for your gift of the Holy Spirit through whom you are with us now and always, at all times 
and in all places as our guardian, our guide, our comforter. We bring our prayers in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> our next hymn is number 638, Through All the Changing Scenes of Life, in Trouble and in Joy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. 638. They spent their time in learning from the apostles, taking part in the fellowship, and sharing and now we'll have the our first meals two Bible readings. and the prayers. Many miracles and wonders were being done through the apostles, and everyone was filled with awe. 
all the believers continued together in close fellowship and shared their belongings with one another. They would sell their property and possessions and distribute the money among all according to what each one needed. Day after day they met as a group in the temple and they had their meals together in their homes, eating with glad and humble hearts, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. Amen. Reading from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 to 25. God will bless you for this if you endure the pain of undeserved suffering because you are conscious of his will. For what credit is there if you endure the beatings you deserve for having done wrong? But if you endure suffering even when you have done right, God will bless you for it. It was to this that God called you, for Christ himself suffered for you and left you an example so that you would follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no one ever heard a lie come from his lips. When he was insulted, he did not answer back with an insult. And when he suffered, he did not threaten but placed his hopes in God, the righteous judge. Christ himself carried our sins in his body to the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. It is by his wounds that you have been healed. You were like sheep that had lost their way, but now you have been bought, brought back to follow the shepherd and keeper of your souls. Amen. <coughs> Thank you for those readings. Our next hymn is a para paraphrase of Psalm 23. It's number 479. The king of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. 479.
Our Gospel reading comes from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those words from the end of our gospel reading. My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. We are still in the season of Easter. Easter is not just one day, it's a season which lasts for 40 days. And Easter is a time for looking forward to new life. One of the symbols of Easter is the egg. I wasn't thinking of the chocolate type. But the egg is a symbol of fertility, and the egg leads to new life. In our family, we have experienced new life from the egg. A few years ago, this very week, what started as Joyce's daughter-in-law's egg became new life, a grandson. He's now nine, or he will be in a few days' time. The egg also represents the tomb where Christ's body was laid and from which he escaped I'm not sure escaped is the right word, but from which he escaped with new life. A bird's egg is a motionless, hard, dull object, but it can bring forth a new living being. Chicken, duck, goose, or whatever. And it can also give life in another way. When we eat the egg, it is sustaining life. It keeps us alive by providing nutrition. Egg means life. <coughs> Another aspect of Easter is that it falls around the beginning of spring. The earth has been dormant through the winter. Winter brings death to many plants and insects. But the seeds and larvae that have lain buried in the soil come to life 
and bring another generation of plants and animals. Some animals have been hibernating and they awake from their sleep and gradually the whole of the natural world which has been in a death-like state returns to life and nature resumes after its still, time of stillness and quietness through the winter. And we do much the same. Through winter, we go out a lot less often. We travel much shorter distances. We do less in the way of outdoor activity. And some of us even sleep more. But with the coming of spring, we spend more time in the garden. More time visiting family and friends. More time going off for a holiday. And we are generally more active. We don't hibernate in winter the way many animals do. But we do try to go out as little as possible, especially if the weather is bad. In our readings today, we see several different aspects of new life. Our first reading was from the Acts of the Apostles and is about a new way of life. Earlier in the chapter, the people had received the Holy Spirit as Jesus had promised. And we look upon that as the birth of the Christian church. And that is another aspect of new life. But this passage is also about the formation of the first Christian communities. The disciples realized that in order to follow Jesus, they must abandon the earthly greed for material possessions. So they sold what they didn't need and probably held just a few essential items in common. They shared the proceeds of the sales of their possessions with the poor, recognizing through the teachings of Jesus that anyone in need was their neighbor. If one of them needed a tool or a piece of equipment, he would be entitled to use it, but not to take ownership. When one person or one family needed food and drink, it would be there for them. God would provide one way or another. No one owned anything and no one withheld anything from the others. They had invented communism long before our modern politicians got their hands on it and spoiled it. Our second reading was from St. Peter's first letter. <coughs> and here we see a new way of looking at suffering. Peter tells us that if a man has done wrong and suffers as a result, there is nothing good or wonderful about that. But if a man does good and suffers, that is different, very different. Jesus did good. Jesus suffered for doing good. And he did not retaliate. He did not fight back. He did not reply to the insults of his accusers and detractors. And this is the most important point. Jesus died for our salvation. This is the new life aspect here. <clears throat> In those days, 
the people believed that if you suffered, then God was punishing you for something you had done wrong. And if you hadn't done wrong, then you were being punished for something your parents had done wrong and had somehow escaped punishment. Or it might be your grandparents or some other ancestor. In the Ten Commandments, in Exodus chapter 20, God says he will punish the children for the sins of their fathers to the third and fourth generation if they worship false idols. And this threat is repeated several times for other sins in the other less important commandments in the early books of the Old Testament. Sometimes implying that the sin can carry forward for many more than just four generations. But what Peter is telling us, echoing what Jesus himself said several times, is that the good man is suffering for the future sins of others, not the past sins. Jesus did not suffer for the sins of his ancestors but for sins not yet committed. Our sins, the sins of the whole of humanity from his death 2,000 years ago, through today and on to the end of time when heaven and earth are one. And that will be a lot of sins. In the gospel reading, Jesus talks about being the shepherd who leads his flock. <coughs> in the Middle East, the shepherd didn't drive his sheep from behind as we do in Northern Europe. He led them from in front. And they followed because they recognized the sound of his voice. They knew he was their protector. They were fully aware that if they followed him, they would come to no harm. And so it is with us today. Jesus speaks to us, sometimes in our prayers, sometimes in other ways. And we recognize his voice. We don't recognize the actual sound of his voice. But we know from what he says that it is him. And he invites us to follow him, to be led away from evil towards his teachings, to new life. Just as a good shepherd leads his flock away from danger and towards safety and good pasture. <clears throat> So we have three different aspects of new life. The new way of living together and sharing our goods. The new way of suffering for future sins rather than past sins. And the new life Jesus offers. These three are very different but are all linked to the teachings of Jesus. Not just what he taught us in his, in his words, <coughs> but also what he taught us by the way he lived his life and the way he died for us. By following his teachings, we can have two forms of new life. One, a new form of behavior, which we can live here on earth and the other, a new life, which we will have when we leave this world and join our Lord in the next world. 
I know that many people look back at the way things used to be in the old days. And some aspects of days gone by were good. But some were bad. And we get, forget those things sometimes. Like burning witches, for instance. Shoving little boys up chimneys. Sending small children down the mine. Or for the good old days. But humanity has already been forgiven those sins by the sacrifice of Jesus. So let us look forward to our new lives with Christ and do all we can to move in the right direction and help each other along on this important journey, this journey of new life, this journey leading us to an even greater new life in the next world where heaven and earth are one. Amen. Our next hymn is number 312. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. A royal diadem adorns the mighty victor's brow. 312. Heavenly Father, in our prayers for others, we bring before you <clears throat> all those in need of your help and your grace. In our prayers for the church, we pray for the many churches around the world, different in many ways. We're coming together to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. We pray 
for the church in places where they are persecuted. They cannot come together as we have today for fear of putting their lives at risk. But we give thanks for all those who stand up and declare Lord Jesus to be their saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our prayers for the world, we pray for a world torn apart by violence and war. At present, we pray for the people of Ukraine and her neighbours and the people of Sudan and those in many other places where the unrest has slipped off our screens but it still continues. And we give thanks for all those working to bring peace to these places of unrest. And we pray for the people whose lives are disrupted by natural and man-made disasters. Thinking of the people of Syria and Turkey and many other places suffering from earthquakes and volcanoes and famine and drought and flood. And we give thanks for all those working to bring humanitarian aid to these places. Often putting their own health or even their own lives at risk to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our prayers for the community, we pray for those around us. Our families and friends, neighbours and colleagues. Remembering the places where the people suffer from unemployment and homelessness who struggle to put food on their table who struggle to heat their homes when the weather is cold Lord in your mercy hear our prayer in our prayers for those <coughs> with a personal need. We pray for those suffering from illness and disease, suffering as a result of accident or act of violence, those suffering bereavement at this time, those suffering from depression and other forms of mental and emotional difficulty Father let them feel your comforting arm around them remind them that you are there for them Lord in your mercy hear our prayer in our prayers for the departed we give thanks for the lives of those we have known and loved but see no longer in this life. We give thanks for the love and friendship and comradeship that we shared with them. Firm in the hope 
that one day we will be reunited with them in a better place. Rest eternal, grant them, Father, and let your everlasting light shine upon them. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. We ask that you equip us. Put the thoughts into our minds, the words into our mouths, and the courage into our hearts to take the good news of our Lord Jesus out into the world. To bring new life to others. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 313. Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son. Endless is the victory thou or death hast won. 313. Bless us and keep us. May his heavenly light shine upon us and may he grant us peace. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Next week, the service will be led by the Reverend John Purdy. So please feel free to join in.
Take the time to call my name. Take the time to Take the tiredness of my days, take my past regret, letting your forgiveness touch all I can't forget. Take the little child in me. Scared of growing old Help me here to find my worth Made in Christ's own mold Take my talents, take my skills Take what's yet to Stop.